It is Memorial Day 2022, and this marks the third night in a row that I've had clear skies, and it seems like forever since I've been able to really gather a good amount of data for a project. So with the peak of Milky Way season just around the corner, um, I'm once again able to photograph some of my favorite iconic deep space nebula targets made famous by the Hubble Space Telescope. And as time goes by, I've noticed a lot more people are finding out about these interstellar gas clouds, and they're trying their hand at astrophotography. So that's awesome, guys, because because space is awesome. So tonight I will be using my RedCat 51 APO refractor telescope to capture a unique view of one of my favorite targets that was actually one of the first targets that I ever saw through a telescope about five years ago. So stick around guys, I've gathered a healthy amount of data for this one. I really think you're gonna like this one. Project, I've chosen to shoot M8, aka the Lagoon Nebula, located 5,000 light years away from Earth in the constellation Sagittarius. Taking advantage of the Red Cat's modest 250 millimeter focal length will allow me to also include a few other surrounding objects in the frame. So we have M20, the Triffid Nebula, M21, an open star cluster, the H2 region, IC1275. NGC 6544, the Starfish Cluster, and M8, the Lagoon Nebula. So for this project, I'm pairing the Red Cat 51 with the ASI 183 MC Pro one-shot color astronomy camera. I am going to be using a few different filters. For night one, I used the Optolong L Extreme Duo Narrowband filter, and that was just to kind of isolate that red hydrogen gas and make it pop a little bit from the, the background. For night two, I switched filters and I switched the Optolong L Pro uh, broadband filter and this is going to allow me to reduce any light pollution or air glow. Um, it was kind of hazy last night. It should really help with that and help retain a little bit of those natural star colors. And for tonight, again, I'm just going to gather more data using the L Pro and add it to what I've gotten so far. Um, with the L Extreme filter, I gathered about 55 300 second exposures and with the L Pro on the first night, I gathered the same, about 50 or 55 exposures, 300 seconds. And tonight, hopefully, I can gather another 50. So I got everything running now. Using the ZWO ASI-120MM Mini guide camera will allow me to auto-guide the session and dither the exposures, which is really important to help reduce any walking noise in the image, which again will greatly help with the overall uh, noise level in the final stack. So if everything goes according to plan, guys, I should have a pretty amazing image of Lagoon and Triffid Nebula in all its glory. Let's do it. I wanted to show you guys the new feature that they added in the recent update with the ASI Air Pro. We have this little uh, constellation down here in the corner. If we click on it, it actually brings open a planetarium app and you're able to just kind of look around at different things and you're able to slew to targets like this and it shows the exact uh, framing of your camera and the position of it around the target and everything it's super super cool and helpful um, it just makes framing up targets super easy but you can see if we zoom in here you can see we can very easily reframe up our target from the night before exactly the same spot that we had it and we click this little go cross here in the bottom right hand corner and the mount will salute to the target yeah i just thought that was a really cool feature and i've been waiting for something like this for a really long time on the asi air and yeah they finally did it so thanks zwo now i can be even lazier than before i remember uh the very first time i ever saw the Lagoon Nebula. I uh, got the Zenith Star 61 refractor telescope and I had the iOptron Skyguider Pro. Uh, I was super excited. Uh, I just remember uh, spending so much time trying to find it and when I finally did it was just it was so cool looking on the camera screen and it was it was really tiny way over in the corner. I remember I was so nervous that because it took so long to get it in the frame that I was afraid to try to center it in the middle of the frame, so 
I just uh, I just left it. Probably really blurry picture of the uh, Lagoon Nebula, but I was super excited about it. And I remember I wanted to practice my hand at some image stacking. So I had a shutter release cable, but I didn't have an intervalometer. So if you were anything like me, guys, you started out with just a, just a simple shutter release cable and you quickly realize that an intervalometer is what you need because the shutter release cable, I remember standing right over here in the yard and I had to literally stand there and hold the shutter down. It didn't even have a locking thing on the shutter. You just had to hold the button down and I would count to 60 and release. I just remember doing that for like an hour or two, counting in my head and that's really when I fell in love with the night sky, I think. And yeah, it's one of the most beautiful uh, nebulas in the night sky and it's, it's why it's one of my favorites. And hopefully after we get everything stacked up, we can produce the perfect astrophotography image. So after five nights in a row with clear skies, I was finally able to gather up enough data to produce the most amazing picture of the Lagoon and Triffid Nebula I have ever captured. Um, I ended up combining all the individual frames into three separate master files using Astro Pixel Processor. It is a software on the computer that makes that process a lot easier than it sounds. So we're gonna go ahead and jump on the computer. I'll let you guys take a look at the raw file straight out of APP, and I will leave a link in the description also for the raw file files if anybody wants to download them and try their hand at processing some quality data feel free to do so uh, just tag me in the finished post so I can see what it looks like so we're gonna go ahead and jump on the computer guys all right guys here we are on the computer and I just kind of wanted to show you guys what these look like straight out of Astro pixel processor here and I will start off by saying um, when you're doing multiple nights like this you you really want to make sure that after each night that you uh, unload the memory card on the computer so I like to come in here and I'll show you what I did here so I made I have my lights flats darks and dark flats here and then I have night two with the L Pro night three with the L Pro I have night four with the IR cut and night five with the IR cut and if you look in here I have each one of them blue labeled here on each night and if you think about it um, the night starts on one day and then the next day it rolls over when you pull them on the computer your files will say the third and the fourth and then if you shoot again the next night your files will say the fourth and the fifth so it's you can see it's very easy to confuse the two. You can't really remember which night is which, so it's best practice just to do this. I used to not do this, and it was always just like a jumbled mess. So I just wanted to point that out, guys. Um, but we're going to go ahead and jump here onto Photoshop. I did with the two nights with the L Pro and one night with the IR Cut filter, and that's what this is and then I have the HA data here that I extracted out of the L Extreme uh, filter data. So if we look here, it's just super clean. I mean, there is a little bit of noise there, but that's just the HA data, so it looks really nice. And then we have here we have the L Extreme data, and we're just going to rotate these 90 degrees. And this is how I'm going to compose the shot here. I'm going to do a vertical. Let's just go ahead and rotate all of these. And then we have the, for some reason it didn't really line up exactly but we can crop that out no big deal so we're gonna go ok 
okay so yeah you can zoom in here and it's just super nice looking this is the uh, this is an auto stretch uh, with the background calibrated straight out of APP nothing else has been done to it no crops or anything and yeah it just looks really clean you can zoom in and the, this ended up being a 15.8 hour exposure and I will leave a link in the description for uh, the raw files if you guys want to download these. I'll put all the files I have open here. This is mine and I'm just about finished here and yeah if you guys uh, download these and process them it'd be awesome to see what you guys come up with. Um, if you guys want to just post them in the comments or whatever. Um, yeah I think I did a pretty good job here. My stars are small brought out a lot of that detail in the nebula here you can see I'm super happy with this one guys <laughs> so it, it, yeah it's tempting not to want to uh, switch targets every night uh, when you have five clear nights in a row I just stuck with it and I'm glad I did because wow this is just amazing just look at the detail in this. This is actually a target that I might shoot now with the Z81 a little closer. I'll probably be, I could probably capture this pretty nicely. So, I don't know guys. But, yeah, anyway, I'll leave a link in the description below. So, make sure you guys check that out. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, uh, please do so if you like videos like this. And... I seem to gather more data that I can actually process so I've been thinking about just posting videos um, just sharing my data with you guys so if that's something you guys might be interested in uh, let me know in the comments below um, that's all I got for this video guys I'm gonna play around with this a little more and yeah I'll see you in the next one guys peace